Welcome to Apostolic Archive. We have gathered many wonderful sermons through the years and we have decided to share them with the world. We hope you enjoy. Please subscribe to our channel. Please like the video and comment with something you take away from this message. Also, hit the bell below so you can receive an update as soon as we upload new content. Blessings. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. It feels wonderful to be in the house of the Lord with the people of God. And as you make your way back to your seats, I'm just going to make a few remarks. And we will get right into the word. It is a privilege and honor and opportunity to be with you today. Amen. Amen. I want to say thank you to this host church, Pastor McCoy, Bishop Green, and anyone else that had any input and allowed me to be here, give you honor. What a wonderful atmosphere. What a wonderful property, facility. God's favor is here. Amen. If you have your Bibles and you're reaching for those, we're going to go in the New Testament. And while you're turning there, I don't know if they have a picture of my family. I always love to introduce my family. Yeah. Oh my goodness, my kids' eyes, they look like they're possessed or something. Like their pupils are missing. I promise you that they're not possessed. But that is Noah, Grace, and Eden, 10 years old, 8 years old, 5 years old, and I love them very much. And usually, an Ellen and my family travels with me, but just our schedule, we had to just acclimate and adjust a few things. But I love my children dearly. And if they were here, they'd be worshiping the Lord, and they would be laying hands on people, praying for people. I believe youth will rise to the level of expectation. And uh, if you ever go to the Jesus Church in Watertown, South Dakota, you'll find kids five years old, six years old, all sitting on the front row, taking notes with a handout. They're not playing games. They're not watching shows. They're engaged in the service. If you're here and you're a parent, I would encourage you. I'm not slamming, damning, condemning you, but I would encourage you to get your children to be engaged and immersed in the service. You're going to fight fights. It's a lot easier to hand them a loaded revolver called a phone. It's a lot easier to do that. But I promise you the effort you put to get your child immersed in the service will be worth it down the road. I'm just meddling a little bit. But I, I have a great passion for the young generation, not just teenagers, but children. And we're trying to raise up an army in South Dakota of children that love to be in church and are connected because I can't compete with a phone. I can't compete with an iPad. I can't compete with a nursery. So we just remove all those things in service. I know we sound like a cult or weird, but I promise you, you come to service, you will enjoy being in the liberty of the presence of the Most High, watching children just pace back and forth, worshiping God, laying hands on one another. I don't know why I'm saying all that, but I don't know if you have a picture of my wife. And... Nope. But if you can look through a glass darkly, that's her right there. Powerful, mystic woman of God. And uh, only those that have eyes to see can see. And so I love my wife. She's a powerful, powerful woman of God. This past December, we have been married 16 years. Yeah. So we got married when we were 11. And I always give honor to my wife. I'll never forget hearing the voice of the Lord speak to me that if it was not for my wife's covering, I would be in hell. And so my wife, if you're here, you're single, you're ready to mingle, one of the most important decisions you can make is who you marry. And I hope that you're not so shallow that it's about mere external attraction. My wife is not an accessory. My wife is an asset and an ally in apostolic ministry. And if you are a young person, you want to marry someone that is prayed up. There's days you're going to be down. You're going to be in the valley. 
And you're going to want someone that has a prayer life to be there with you. Amen. Give honor to all the officials here today. If you're official, unofficial, or superficial, I'll give you honor. If you're elected or neglected, I'll give you honor as well. Romans chapter 13, verse 11 through 14. I wish I could be here the whole weekend with you. Um, there's a number of people I would like to spend some time with. My friend Tyler Sullivan, I love that mighty man of God, minstrel of the Most High. You know, you got people like that. They're tall. They can preach. They can sing. I puke on them. They make me sick. But I love them. I love, love Reverend Most High Sullivan. Amen. And I wish I could spend time a little longer this weekend to meet Pastor McDonald. I have a friend that has been at their church, and he has just basically talked my ear off about how awesome the church in Eureka is. And I give you honor. Romans 13, 11 through 14. And knowing the time. Someone say, know the time. You know what time it is? It's high time. We got to wake up out of sleep. Someone say, now. now. Our salvation is nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let's cast off the works of darkness. Let's put on the armor of light. Let's try walking honestly. Not in rioting. Someone say, not in rioting. Not rioting. Say it again so you can remind yourself, not in rioting. Not rioting. Drunkenness, chambering, wantonness, not in strife and envy. We read through this list. The church doesn't really struggle with the first four. It's the last two, the quarreling and the jealousy. That's a sermon for another day. So put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And don't make provision for the flesh. Don't feed your carnal appetite. If you feed that carnal appetite, you're going to fall into that trap of lust. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 8 and 9. This is a very near and dear portion of Scripture to my heart because when I was at one of the lowest points in my life in the church plant, in Watertown, South Dakota. My wife and I went up there at age 22. We've been pastoring there. This spring will be 15 years. And I was been through many valleys. But one point of walking away from it all, God gave me this verse. He said, I will tarry at Watertown, South Dakota until Pentecost. You got to make up in your mind to stay in this until you see that Pentecost. Someone say a great door. It's effectual. It's open to you. And there are many adversaries. I'm just going to talk for the next few moments about a door of opportunity. A door of opportunity. Would you pray with me? Lord, I love you. You put a burden on my heart. I pray, God, that you would open up the windows of heaven and roll back the roof of this church. Fixate a ladder between heaven and earth, and may the angels of the Lord ascend and descend upon this hallowed ground. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would walk up and down the aisles, Lord, of the saints of the Most High. And I pray that your kingdom would come. I pray that your will would be done here tonight on earth as it is in heaven, God. I pray, Lord, that your will be done. Lord, it's not by my might and it's not by my power, but it is by your Spirit. And God, I trust you. I rely on you. I depend on you. I believe in you. Let your will be done. Someone say in Jesus' name. Amen. Siéntete por favor en la presencia de Dios. Dice amen. Happy hallelujah. Hallelujah. They gave me a baby water. I don't know if it's because I'm a tiny guy or what. Now I know what like average size hands feel like. You know, I just feel like, all right, this is what it's like to be six foot tall. Everyone say door of opportunity. This 
This may be a little different than what maybe you expect for a, a Friday night gathering at a conference. I know that we want to go into convulsions, have seizures, bite walls, and shake all over the place, but I, I'm not convinced that that's what the Lord has put on my heart. And there is a tremendous pressure to give into a, a setting, a venue, but uh, I, I pray that I could be sensitive to the Lord and obedient. And I do feel in my spirit that I may not be speaking to everybody in this room, but there are a few people in this room that God loves enough to slow things down and to give you a specific word. And the word that I have, I pray Isaiah 50 verse 4, The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. And I have a healing word for somebody today, as it says in Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And there is a living word that is here today, and God is going to help you. God is going to minister, and I'm going to be obedient as I can and be sensitive to the Lord. It is 745, I will be conscious of your time, but at the same time, I'm not in a rush either. And if you have to exit, I understand some may have jobs in the morning or overnight shift. You will not offend me. I'm used to preaching in South Dakota, so I'm used to Mount Rushmore. We'll be okay. But God's going to help somebody. There is a healing virtue that is going to be released here tonight. Opportunity, a door of opportunity. We read a verse like this about this door of opportunity. And we like to hear preaching about doors. And we like to hear about destinies and, and, and a revival taking place. But do you realize Paul gave us some insight to the reality that opportunity tends to be coupled with adversity. Whatever the opportunity, the greater the opportunity, the greater adversity that you will find. And it basically kind of siphons off and filters out those that really want to go beyond where they are at. And those who want to just kind of stay at bay and just kind of coast through until they get to the other side. I do believe it is possible to get to heaven and maybe not experience the miraculous and the supernatural and teaching Bible studies. I mean, we can fuss and cuss and go through Scripture about all of that, but let's just say you can make it not really doing anything for God. But I'm just not interested in this day and hour and just merely getting to heaven. I, I want to walk through any door of opportunity that is set before me, though it may be coupled with adversity. It is easy for us in this moment, in this setting, to clap, to stand, to applaud, and to be excited. But it's a whole other thing to be outside of this venue in a different setting where you're not surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. And you are now isolated alone, the only person that is baptized in Jesus' name in your middle school, your high school, in your uh, college, in your career, wherever you find yourself, whatever the setting. There is adversity. I fight this desire not to preach what I preach because I'm tired of hearing about COVID-19. I'm tired of hearing about pandemic. I, I, I don't like preaching about it. I don't want to even talk about it because it's basically like the sermon of the year. Every sermon is just somehow weasels its way in and it becomes addressed. But I feel the need to address a few things from a unique perspective, perhaps. I will just tell you, please do not have your defense mechanism up. I do not come here to preach a political sermon. I do not come here to preach a medical sermon. I do not come here to say, you know, pro-mask, no-mask, none of that whatsoever. So I just want you to relax and just listen to some thoughts that I have had being from the setting I am from. If you do not know this, I am from South Dakota. All that means is south of the North Pole. I pastor in the fifth coldest city in the United States of America. That includes Alaska. It's pretty cold where we're at, but we're right now the prophecies of Al Gore have come true, and we're in a heat wave. Global warming has smitten South Dakota, and I am thankful for it. It has not went below zero 
this January, which usually the whole month is pretty much below zero. So I'm thankful. Only a couple of blizzards so far, not too many. But something unique about us, and I don't know if you know this, is South Dakota is the only place in the United States of America, in North America, and in the world that has not had any mandates or restrictions regarding COVID-19. No, no I, I, don't, I don't need no hillbilly amens or nothing like that. Don't, don't pop belly run the aisles, okay? But just, just this, I don't want any hand claps because this is not a pro-con statement. Just let me talk for a moment, okay? Is that fair? I don't want to be accused of anything. Wouldn't be the first time, but I do live in a unique land. And I came across a, a book this week. My wife and I were out in the Black Hills in the Badlands of South Dakota. Uh, it's a very diverse state with lots of um, just different types of land. And I found a book about South Dakota through the century from the, 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 when it was a territory and when it became a state. And I wasn't looking for anything. I was just looking at pictures. I'm kind of a picture guy, you know, and I don't like to read. And so I, I was looking at the pictures of how South Dakota was before, you know, we, we came and, and basically industrialized it. But it was about the west side, and it showed this scenic picture, one of my favorite spots in South Dakota, and it's called Sylvan Lake. It is absolutely gorgeous, absolutely beautiful area, Needles Highway, Custer State Park. I love it. I go there as much as I can. And... Um, it has this scenery, and then it was the commentary in that scenery was from the 1960s. And it begins to explain the cultural revolution that was taking place in the 60s, and not just then, but even in the 20s and in the 40s, and just some really shaking times during the wars and during the cultural revolution, during drug pandemics, and all, of, all these things that were taking place. And it just said, South Dakota was one of the few places on planet Earth that life continued as everyone else was sidetracked in their situation. Things remained idyllic. The economy was good. Life was good. Things were calm. And things were not affected drastically like other places in the world and in the country. And that's kind of like what it's been for me in South Dakota in the year of 2020. You all went through something I've been going through for the past 15 years. It's called social distancing. It's called isolation and depression. That's South Dakota. It would not be a good way to advertise, come help us. But I've been living that way for a long time, for over a decade, living in that type of setting while you all are learning and you barely survive that setting. And what is interesting that you know, I remember the time and the place when the, the domino effect happened back in March. And uh, it's was, it was just one of those moments. I'll never forget where I was when things began to happen. I was at an event in Michigan, and the governor began to enact things, and the district event was shut down, and everything just began to, to, to spread. And um, it was just like an, it was just a palatable fear that began to take place. And I'm trying to figure things out because I haven't watched the news. I haven't read the news. I haven't done any of that in over... Uh, it was like at that point, it was over a year. Um, I got tired of basically opening up uh, uh, each article and reading about the news and it basically setting the tone of my day, setting the temperament and, and my train of thought and raising my blood pressure. And so I just shut it all off. I'm not going to read. I'm not going to study it. I'm not going to look at it. I don't want to know nothing about it. I'm just going to live in my ignoramus state. That's how I'm going to be. And I'm going to just tag in with God before I tag in with anyone else. And it's just interesting, every morning when I tagged in with God, He never gave me worry as a headline. He never gave me fear as a headline. He never gave me anxiety to start off my day. I always started off with a word from the Lord, with a little encouragement and a little faith. And so, I... Um, I'm there, and things are unraveling, etc. And I was grounded from March to June. All events across the country, churches, everything, people online only kind of thing. And again, if you're nervous, just put your defense mechanism down. I'm not here to attack nothing, okay? But I am here to bring a word of healing. And so, anyways, I, um, I got invited to go somewhere in June. 
And I, 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 I went to there and things started back opening up again. And I, I'm somewhere about three times a month. I don't say it to brag. I'm just helping to give you some understanding that uh, I'm, I'm not just stuck in South Dakota. I, I go across the country and I see things and I'm exposed to things. And so we, we, we started traveling again and I was... I was basically continuing life as normal in South Dakota while the world was on a different pathway. And so I was excited to go back somewhere again. And, and, and I went, and then I went to the next place, the next place. It was a very big learning experience for me. I, I never wore a mask. The first time I ever had to wear a mask. And again, this is not a pro-con statement. If you're here with the mask, you feel very secure right now, don't worry. If you're online listening, don't worry. I'm just giving you an experience from the culture that I'm raising, that I'm living in. Is that fair? Okay. And so the first time I had to wear a mask was in the airport. And then I'm learning about like not being around people. And, uh, you know, basically I walk in the airport and, you know, they have all these like, uh, it looked like you're walking into a big game of twister, right foot yellow, left foot green, right hand blue, you know. So I'm, I'm trying to figure my way around. And, and what I can and can't do, I can't be here, can't be there, be this distant, etc. And I'm, I'm being respectful. I'm not trying to pick a fight. I'm not trying to do anything. I'm just following the instructions that have been given to me. And let me just say this. Let me just time out for a moment. I, I, I hope and I believe that you have been gracious to your pastor. I hope you have been merciful to your district. Whatever district you are from, whatever pastor you have, whatever church you have. Because the day and age we are living right now, it's just like this medical issue has turned into a moral issue. And no matter what decision you make, you make somebody extremely upset. You know, it's just like, hey, you know, we're, 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 gonna, we're not going to have in-person service. We're going to stay at home and, and, and we're going to be safe. And you got this crowd, bless God, pastor, don't have any faith. You know, if you ever have faith, you know. And then you got the other side, and hey, let's, 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 uh, the pastors is like, okay, let's do it. Let's all go in together. Let's, let's have faith. Let's have an atmosphere. Let's have, let's praise God. And all of a sudden, pastor doesn't really care. He doesn't even care about my life, my existence, my soul, my anything. He's like, you can't win. And then, and then you're comparing your church context to another church context. You're, you're comparing your district to another district. That is not wise to do because it's not the same in every setting. Look, look, listen, it's just like in the days, in the days of Isaac, there is a famine and he goes to Egypt and God says, don't you dare go to Egypt. And then in the days of Jacob, in a famine, God says, Jacob, go to Egypt. Is God bipolar? Is he messed up? Does he not know? No, 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 no. God deals with each congregation, each district, each individual a little differently. And you just got to trust that your man of God and your leadership and your district are being prayerful. They're being considerate. They're weighing all options. And they're saying, God, what would you have us to do? So anyways, let me just throw this out here. I would encourage you, if you've already not taken this advice, maybe start it. Social media is not the venue to battle this. I do, oh, oh, shh. I, 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 shh. Just let me talk for a moment. This is what I tell our church. I go, look, if you believe flat earth theory, if you believe we did not land on the moon, that's fine. Just don't tell anybody about it. You believe whatever you want. Just, and here's the reason why. Because the moment you voice something in an extreme way, you will alienate the souls that we supposedly want to try to reach. And you can lose your credibility and your witness. Okay, but- we're not trying to incite a riot. We read the scripture. Not in writing. No, okay. okay. We're going somewhere. Time in. And so anyways, I, 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 I'm, I'm at the airport trying to figure out. I can't touch. I can't, I can't anything. Don't handle. Don't taste. Don't touch. And so we have to each. And I'm literally learning in the moment. I'm learning in the moment. Because I haven't lived this way. And so I'm, I'm very nervous. I'm trying to, like, okay, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? And I have to sneeze, but I can't. I'm just like, I better not sneeze. I better not. And so we, 
We have to go in one at a time into the airplane. I'm like, okay. But I'm thinking like, maybe they redesigned the airplane on the inside. I don't, I don't know. Went into a 777, 787, over 300 seats. Completely sold out. And the people I had to be six feet from, I am literally sitting on their lap now. I'm like, so I'm like, I'm just, again, I'm not mocking. I, I, I'm, I promise you, I'm not mocking. I'm trying to let you know with somebody that has lived in a different world. And, it's been, and so I walk in, and so I'm, I'm being careful. I'm trying to figure out, I'm thinking, I'm not voicing anything. And then, and then they came, the stewardess, and started handing out what I would call holy magic pretzels. Because when those holy magic pretzels opened, everybody took off their mask. And we're eating, and we're talking, and I'm like, what is in this stuff? Dude, whoa, wow. And look, I, I, I try to be as positive as I can. You know, some people are so negative, you hand them a donut, all they see is the hole, right? And so, we get out of the plane, and because I have no more pretzels, I have to put my mask on. And so I'm going through the airport, and I have to use the restroom. I go to the restroom, and I see something I've never seen in my life. For the first time, there were men washing their hands. And I begin to thank God for COVID-19. If anything, men are starting to wash their hands. Man, there should be some ladies running the aisles, losing bobby pins. Mercy. You okay? And I had some head-scratching moments, to be honest. But I tell you the most difficult thing has not been going to an airport, not going to public places, but going to churches since they've opened back up. And I tell you, I have walked into a whole nother world. Now, everybody might be used to it because they've been living an extended period of time in the state that they are currently in. But I'm telling you from an outsider perspective, where you know, in South Dakota, this is gonna, this is gonna scare you to death. You're gonna be mad at me. You're gonna whatever. But we still lay hands on the sick. We still spit on faces. We still roll on the floor. We... So, so going now to church after church, district after district, event after event, I'm seeing a different people. I am seeing a different church and I have some concerns. And I believe the Lord is going to help us in these next few moments. I've, I've been preaching 15 minutes. Are you okay? We okay? Now look, you can fire me, you kick me out. It's all right. South Dakota will take me back. Maybe. But it was somewhat exciting in the beginning. I've talked and heard so many things from so many different people and their experience of when this started and launched off. And, and all of a sudden, like, you know, God answered everyone's prayer last March. Oh, I wonder what it would be like to work from home. Yeah, babe, I, uh, man, if my job would let me, I'd like to spend more time with the kids. God answered that prayer and that prayer. I wonder what homeschooling would be like. God answer that prayer. Now you know how terrible your kid really is. And we thought life might be easier working out of home. Not having to pack all the family up and make the big expedition to church. Wow, we don't have to get up so early. Wow, we don't have to be stuck at the building so long. Wow, we don't have to do all the cleaning. Wow, we don't. There was so much excitement 
about this new venture of doing something we've never done before and it seems as if less work will produce more results. But as we have discovered, 2020 has been an extremely draining year. It has been a very wearisome season that we have been in this past year. Again, I am not here to try to magnify the problem. I'm here to give some insight and some context to what is going at on in our world. And it's just, it, this is, this is all, again, all my peers, my pastors, my elders, the people I have talked to, things I've heard over and over again, that they've had to work even more than they did before. They've had to put more time into sermon preparation, more time into editing, more time into sound, more time into media, more time into getting the church to spec so they can at least have all these things we found ourselves doing more and more. And in the beginning, it was somewhat kind of exciting because now our church has a video feed. Or now our church went from 20 views to 80 views. Now we went from 80 views to 800 views. And it does something to you. There is an excitement in the new venture. And I'm thankful for new methods and new avenues, new ways and new approaches that we have put in motion so we can preach the gospel to the entire world. But after a while, after all the work and after all the sermons, we've heard all the preaching about the church leaving the building. We've heard all the encouragement about now the whole gospel hears the world and we'll have more uh, miracles, more signs, more wonders, more addition, more, more, more. But if you have any friends and family in this movement that have been and you've talked to them, you have discovered that it is not more, more more results it's more 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 work less 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 results deuteronomy 28 verses 38 through 41 you're carrying much seed you're doing as much as you can in the field but it seems to be that we are gathering little we're out there planting in the vineyards, verse 39. We're dressing the